welcome to the peaceful Dutch city of Assen. In the northeast of the country, it dates back to 1258 and is currently one of the Netherlands' fastest growing towns. Periodically though, the peace here is shattered. This is the TT circuit at Assen, one of the world's greatest motorsporting facilities. They've been holding races in Assen since 1925. Then it was on a 28 and a half kilometer loop of wild country roads. The permanent racetrack here opened in 1955 and is still a world center for speed. Whether on two wheels or four, Assen is always a challenge and a treat. It's the final race weekend of the inaugural acceleration season. Time to get back to action and who better to show us around this circuit than a Dutchman, Nigel Melker. It's a really nice track because it's a motor GP track. It's uh, quite fluing, um, so you have to focus on uh, mid corner speed, especially turn one. It's just uh, yeah, you have to focus on the mid corner speed, so release the brakes really quickly. And uh, then at this point, it's quite technical because you have two right corners, two right hands. Then you have to come back quite aggressive for the sharp left hander. But you have to focus on the exit because after that you have a very long straight. So especially in the race, you know, this is the point where you can overtake. You can push somebody to make a mistake over there and then overtake him. In Holland, we say the Ruskin hook. It's really fast and really exciting. And then this corner is just about mid-corner speed, like turn one. This is also quite technical. You cannot be so aggressive and brake really late. It's more about you know, braking maybe a little bit earlier, but release the brakes early and use a lot the, the, the lateral grip of the car. And then this corner is where you need to have big balls. So I think we can do it flat, but we have to see tomorrow. And then also this one, really late braking. Um, be quite aggressive, turn the car, use the curbs a lot and make a good exit for the long straight again. Ready for the first track action and it's our MW V6 pickup series. Danny van Dongen, the local man from the Netherlands, leading the standings. He's completed all the races bar one and already has nearly half a dozen wins under his belt. He's on the front row of the grid with Daniel de Jong. De Jong with the black nose. 25 minute race and away they go. These NASCAR style pickups, always difficult to handle on cold tyres. And at this time of the evening, that's going to be a problem for the drivers in the first lap or so. Van Dongen with the lead then. Knows this track well. And right behind him, Daniel de Jong. Two Dutch drivers showing the rest of the way. Third place is Joel Affolter. New to the trucks this weekend. On board with Johan Kran. Big pack behind. And the blue and yellow tail, that's Alex Danielson. Missed two race weekends in the middle of the season, but otherwise he's been a race winner and would have been a championship contender. Daniel de Jong giving chase in second place. De Jong competed in the first race weekend of acceleration and he's back for the last one. Oh, and knocked into a spin. Johan Kran right in the middle of the pack. Clearly heard the contact from behind. Race leaders way out front now. Real pace being shown here by Denny van Dongen. On board with the number 15 car, Bert de Hoos. In front of him, Joel Affolter. They're going three wide down the straight. And into Harbot to come the leaders. The battle for third place rages on behind. Bert de Hoos with Eric Vick still inside him. There he is, right beside us. And he's going to take third place back into the second and third right-handers here at Usserbrücken, then up to the hairpin at Strubben. And the exit here is vital, so going in deep on the inside is gonna leave him in trouble. 
because as they head down the straight at Feinslang, there is a nice long group behind. Berta Hus will struggle to hold them all off. Denny van Dongen still leading here. Daniel de Jong in second place. We're with Herman Pena, just a little further behind the leading group. And Pena with company in his mirrors as well. It's the recovering number 19, Johan Kram. Denny van Dongen leaning the car on the door handles. Single seater ace, Daniel de Jong struggling to stay with him. Well, Johan Kram picks up a place from Herman Pena. Big lock up from de Jong. And that will just drop him another tenth or so behind. Sun almost fully behind the grandstands. Beautiful day for racing. Whoa, wide out over the curbs and through goes Alex Danielson. Picks up a place from Bert de Hoos. And de Hoos slow down the straight. Oh, Danielson with a big wobble there. And he gets it all sorted out. Alex Danielson starting to work his way through this group now. As they come down to the far end of the circuit. And then heading back through the hugely high speed ramps hook up to the gate, Timmy Chicane, that ends the lap. That's always an overtaking opportunity. You have to be brave in ramps hook to get the move done. And this is just about flat out. Danielson piling on the pressure. Looking to get back onto the podium. Into the final corner then. And Danielson with a really good run. All his single-seater expertise coming into play. A little contact. And I think there's a bit of a tyre rub from the right rear corner of Eric Vick's car. Left rear corner even. Albert de Hoos having a little look there to try and get through. Couldn't manage to do it. Lost a place as well. But the blue and yellow Danielson now up into third. Battle really raging though for the lead. Good thinking by Daniel de Jong. He's given his tyres a couple of laps to cool down. Now he's really piling on the pressure. Maybe Denny van Dongen made a mistake around the back of the circuit, but whatever the reason, de Jong is all over him, almost pushing him through the corner. And into the pits comes the number 15, Bert de Hoos. So I'm not sure what the problem is. Van Dongen under pressure now. Nose on the inside. As we ride with Daniel de Jong, they're wheel to wheel. Down the vein slung into Ruskenhoek. Still with the inside line. That's where the road turns in his favour. So a change of lead for the first time. Daniel was second in the first of the races here. Now takes the lead ahead of the man who beat him to the line last time. Danny Van Dongen, although he won't want to, can afford to lose a spot. Championship very firmly in his favour. His closest rival, Ewan Murray, has not come to Assen. In fact, he didn't do the previous round either. And Alex Danielson too far behind in the points. Nevertheless, Daniel de Jong giving him a good run for his money, leading the race now. Daniel de Jong into the closing stages, going to have to chase hard. Heading back out from the pits is Bert de Hoos. So it looks like they've sorted his car out. Here's Joel Lafolta. Whoa, 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 big lock up and drifts out wide. Nice constant throttle, not too aggressive with the steering. Well down, escapes the gravel trap. And that was on one of the few slightly banked corners remaining here. On to the last lap come the leaders then. Daniel de Jong just in front of Danny van Dongen, who is going to end up with victory here. Into the tightening right-hander at Osserbrücken. 
Oh, and Van Dongen lunges to the inside into Struben, the hairpin. Makes the pass, but has to get off the throttle. And here comes Daniel de Jong. Well, that dive up the inside momentarily left Van Dongen in front, but de Jong with a great run down the fence slung. Into Luskenhoek, the right-hander, down two gears and back into the lead. And they've still got half a lap to go. And you have to think that maybe Van Dongen's last opportunity will come at the Gert Timmer chicane, the final couple of corners on the circuit. This TT track at Assen has gone through so many changes over the years. The original bank corners have all but vanished. Curbs now and flat for MotoGP. Still really quick on this back section here, flying up towards the final corner. Alex Danielson in third place. And the battle for the lead, for victory indeed, into the gear, Timmer Chicane, controlled by Daniel de Jong. The chequered flag awaits, and he's right underneath it as he takes victory here. Well, that's a great win for the Dutch youngster, really used his head under great pressure. I flat spotted quite uh, soon my uh, front tyre, because my tyres weren't warm enough. So I was a little bit safe in the beginning. But I saw really soon that he struggled as well as, yeah, with his tyre because yesterday he used a lot. So uh, quite soon I already put pressure on it and I overtook him. But then uh, instead, uh, normally I had slipstream and now he had slipstream and it made it a lot difficult because I tried to really gain more distance to stay away. But then he, he yeah, he stayed really close and he, he kept pushing pressure on me. And uh, yeah, in the last few corners I had to really defend because my tyre started to struggle as well. and. Uh, but with the defending, I won. Indeed, he did ahead of Danny Van Donken with Alex Danielson completing the podium. There's always something going on in the acceleration paddock. Take a look around and you're bound to bump into a driver or two younger ones and older ones. I started racing uh, as a youngster in the Netherlands. And uh, after about 10 years racing here, I ended up in the United States. and. Uh, I, uh, my goal was to, to drive Indy cars uh, first, and once I started driving, uh, the next goal was to, to win the big race, the Indianapolis 500, which, uh, which I won in 1990. And I uh, won the race again in 97. And then as I uh, was at the end of my career, I started helping my son, uh, Ari Jr., uh, race. And he raced in Indy Lights for many years. And he also raced in the A1 GP, which now has become uh, FA1 uh, racing cars uh, like we have here and which are racing this weekend in Austin. It's good racing. I've, saw, I've seen a lot of the tapes. I've seen a lot of the, the footage from this year. These cars have always been really exciting to watch. It'd be fun tonight also to run into David Hasselhoff and uh, watch him perform at the concert tonight because uh, I've known him since 1986 when he actually was partners with uh, my team owner in uh, IndyCars back in 1986. And the team was actually called uh, Hasselhoff Groeneveld Racing. Last time I saw him was in 1999. David Hasselhoff. 24-7! Back at Assen in the Netherlands, and this track is like a magnet for Dutch motorsport fans and competitors joining the action this weekend. The GTs and supercars of the Supercar Challenge. Well, the crowds will soon be flocking trackside as the big guns of the weekend are about to be unleashed. It is time for the FA1 single-seaters. So the crowds are ready, the cars are ready, the formation lap is completed. It's Nigel Melker on pole position for the Netherlands 
Alongside him in the Team GB car, Spaniard Danny Kloss. Sergio Campana lines up third for Italy. Nathaniel Berton in fourth place for China. Grid is almost complete. Revs rise, clutches on biting point, and away we go. Good start from Nigel Melker, not so great from Danny Kloss. Very slow on the right there. That's the Spanish car of Marco Barber down into the first corner. And Nigel Melker has the lead on board with Barber. Contact hits the French car of Alessio Picciarello. And Picciarello comes back on, but Marco Barber has lost his nose wing. And Nigel Melker has the lead, everyone else in second place. And smoke again at Strubben as they get into the hairpin. Running wide, that's the French car again. Picciarello really struggling. He may have a puncture. Nathaniel Berton, he's going slowly too. Sebastian Baltazar has just blown by him. Fifth place, Sergio Campana, he got passed by Portugal's Jerome Moll and Richard Gondra of Slovakia in the first couple of corners. That's the two cars in front. So he's got some work to do. Nigel Melker still leads from Danny Kloss. And Campana attacking the Slovakia car really hard now. We've got a car in the pits already. It's the Team Sweden entry, Craig Dolby there. Disaster for him, should have started eighth. Nigel Melker just creeping away a fraction. It was nearly three tenths quicker in qualifying than Danny Kloss in second spot. On board with Sergio Campana. As they come down through the final corner on the circuit to get Tim Chicane. Well, the leader may be completing lap one, but Marco Barber still heading back to the pits. Nigel Melker, the race leader then. Behind him, by about a second, is Danny Kloss. Third place, Portugal's Jerome Moll. There's the battle for fourth. Red, white and blue is Slovakia. Red and white and green, that's Italy. So Richard Gond is still just in front of Sergio Campana. Oh, and that's a rough ride for Alessio Picciarello. I wonder if it's more damage than just that tyre. Marco Barber's already in, the man who punctured his tyre with his nose wing. And Danny Kloss in second place, the red, white and blue of Team Great Britain, really attacking hard. French car is in for a new tyre, and Kloss has just hit the fastest race lap. There's the damaged Michelin, that's the French car. Danny Kloss really piling the pressure on Nigel Melker for the lead. And down into Sturm and Melker locks up, Kloss is all over the back of him. French car back out on track. The battles all the way down the order and the marshals picking up some debris from the circuit. Brave work. Here's our lead battle then. Nigel Melker and Danny Kloss nose to tail. Out comes the Team Spain car of Marco Barber. Long way back down the order. And still Sergio Campana piling the pressure on Richard Gonda for fourth place. The youngster from Slovakia doing a really good job to hang on. And Picciarello, well, let's hope it was only the tyre that was damaged on his car. This is a fast circuit. Oh, and a big looping spin there. Well, that's the second Team Netherlands car, Baskouten. Another Dutch driver loops it around. Oh, goodness me, Danny Kloss looking very hard down the inside at Nigel Melker. There was nearly contact, and they've got Team Portugal right behind. Jeroen Mull has closed up on the Leeds duo as they battled hard. Look, there's the Portuguese car right behind Team Great Britain. And that'll take a bit of pressure off. Marco Barber in for his regular pit stop now. Pit lane is open for tyre changes. Well, if you were Danny Kloss, you might think now, instead of being stuck behind Nigel Melker, would be the time to get into the pit lane. He's attacked Melker, hasn't got by. He's now got Mull right behind him in third place and piling the pressure on. So Kloss between a rock and a hard place. So first, second, third all together. Pit stops will be really critical here. And I'm afraid it is more than just a tyre damaged on Alessio Picciarello's car. The Team France entry is out of the race. Michael Dorbecker in the Mexican car. Just avoided the spinning bass scouting earlier on. Now he's a little on his own. I'm sure that leader Nigel Melker wishes he was a little more on his own. Big lock up there from Jeroen Mullers. He has a huge lunge for second at Danny Kloss. Loops it around at the get, Tim Chicane. And he's lost two places, but any damage done, he's lost a third as Baltazar almost takes his nose off. So he went from third to sixth place. 
And Danny Koss will be very glad to have seen him vanish from the mirrors. Again, a lock up from Nigel Melka. And again, Kloss right with him. 42 is Sergio Campana, the Team Italy car. Continuing his recovery from that woeful start he made. And Nigel Melka and Danny Kloss race on without the close company of Jeroen Mull. And there is Mull right in front of us as we ride with Nathaniel Berton in the Team China car. Portuguese entry in six, Berton looking to take that away from him here. Well, Melka starting to ease away from Danny Kloss again. The Spaniard has banged his head against the brick wall of Melka's defence for a couple of laps. Now he's going to have to back off and let the tyres recover. In the turbulent air left by Melka's car, Kloss's wings won't work so well. He won't have the front end grip he needs. He'll have to overwork the tyres to stay with him. And that's why you so often see in modern aerodynamic single-seaters attack, drop back, recuperate, charge up again and attack. It's not enough to have the fastest car, even if you have sometimes in the turbulent air, you just can't show it. Melka again around Osserbrücken and into the hairpin at Strubben. Into the pit lane comes Nathaniel Berton, early stop for him, and that might move him up the order. Craig Dolby a couple of laps back, but the Swedish car is circulating quickly as the leaders continue nose to tail. And into the pits comes the Team Portugal car. So your own move from behind Sebastian Balthazar, pits from sixth position. Leaders stay out, I wonder what the tactics are gonna be between them. Oh my goodness, that is a huge one for Team Mexico. Michael Dorbecker getting it very wrong indeed into the gap. Tim Chicane. Goodness me. Well, he has really done some damage there. Out goes Jerome Mull in the Portugal car. But will everybody else have a safety car period in which to make their pit stops? I rather fancy they might. Nigel Melker, the race leader, still from Danny Kloss. And there is Sebastian Balthazar. The marshal's pushing the car away. So we might get away without the safety car for Dorbecker's wreck. But boy, that was a big one. There's Kevin Claveros in the other Mexican car. Debris everywhere, but it is on the grass. So the pit entry is some damage. Melka goes around again, and they've got Dorbecker out of the way, and he's going behind the barriers. That's superb work by the Aston Marshals. Really, really good work. Monster lockup into the pit lane. I wonder if he's going to end up with a penalty for that. Well, away goes Sebastian Balthazar. <laughs> not going to have many, yeah, not going to have many tyres left there, is he? The team just shake their head. I'm sure he'll have flat spotted the front is coming into the pits and he's burned up the rears, leaving. I think we might see a little tidier job by Nigel Melka and Danny Kloss. With Sergio Campana then, what can he produce? Cars in front of him still peeling into the pits. And he picks up places at least at the moment. And Melka and Kloss, 1-2. And now they're not battling. Oh, Craig Dolby has a big lose as well into the gear, Tim Chicane. Not quite so damaging because he goes across the grass backwards. Out comes Richard Conda. So Slovakia heading back on track. There's the Scouten who spun earlier on. And Nigel Melka. Danny Kloss still leading this field. And the longer they go, the better chance perhaps they have of staying in front of those who have stopped. Yellow flags out at the gate. Timur Chicane as Craig Dolby bails out of the Swedish entry. And in comes Melka. And that might be a good choice. Now, Danny Kloss released from behind the Dutch car. Really has to work hard now. He's got to capitalize on clear air, a lap or maybe two. Melka heads out. The battle's raging down the order. Cars that have been in for tyres and cars that haven't. Don't pass under yellow, Sebastian Balthazar. The youngster still has a lot to learn. Vigorously waved yellows and he was making an attacking move, not slowing down as you're supposed to. Danny Kloss is the race leader still. Through the pits went Jamaria Gabbiani. And is Kloss coming in? Yes, this time. 
So Sergio Campana also on pit road. There is Kloss. And there is Campana. Well, these are vital pit stops. Melka, the leader, has already stopped. Great job by Azerti to turn him around. Front tyres for Campana and flat tyres for Gianmaria Gabbiani, looping the second Italian entry round. Away goes Campana. Better pit stop. Danny Kloss was slower. In fact, Kloss has come out behind. Best scouting as well. And there is your leader, Nigel Melka. He stays in the lead. Great outlaps from him. But Sergio Campana has moved into second. Wave yellows at Struben. Nigel Melker arrives there. There's Gabbiani's car on the curbs. On board now with Nathaniel Berton. And that is the number six car. He's attacking a Bas Scouten. Gets by, does he, before the yellows? I'm not sure about that. He might have to pay for that later. There aren't yellow flags anymore. He's got a drop on Danny Kloss, or has he? Kloss on the inside, up to Ruskenhoek. And that is the racing line on the outside. Kloss goes in, deep under braking, but can he hold it on the exit? He cannot, big moment for Danny Kloss. Nathaniel Berton takes third position as Gianmaria Gabbiani walks away. And Danny Kloss's hopes of a podium for Team Great Britain have taken a real knock. Battle's still raging down the order. Sebastian Baltasar ahead of Kevin Claveros. Last lap for Nigel Melka. Long look in the mirrors, nobody is close. As the Dutchman heads to the gate, Timmy Chicane for the final time. The chequered flag will be out. And he has really controlled this race superbly. Not flustered by anything. Victory for Nigel Melka in race one here at Assen. The Dutchman wins in Holland for Team Netherlands. In the beginning, I struggled a little bit, but we knew that uh, our car will improve during the race. And uh, you saw after a few laps, I was, well, after I think uh, 10 laps, I was faster than him. And then uh, after the pit stop, the car was uh, amazing, you know, the car was really, really good. The pit stop didn't go so well, but uh, on the end, we win with uh, 10 seconds. So really good. Second place went to Sergio Campana. We have done a very good job, the car was very fast. I spun a lot at the start, I lost two positions, but then with the strategy and with our pace uh, with, on the pit stop, we gained two positions, three positions, because I was fifth. And uh, I'm happy, I have done a good job with the car, and uh, now I'm, I have a good uh, proposition for the race two, for battle with Nigel. Well, that's a mouth-watering prospect. We'll have to see how it works out. Race one, though, Nigel Melker, the man on the top step of the podium. <laughs> Aston in Holland and the cars heading out onto the grid for our Legends Super Cup encounter. And in this race, it will be pole position for first-time driver Frederick Korneck. And on the right-hand side of your picture, a good run from the line. Ferry Monster knows this track very well. The Dutch driver, he takes the lead in the number five machine. Everyone else in second place. Polman drifts out very wide. He'll drop down maybe to fourth or fifth position. Right behind Ferry Monster, the green car, number seven, Yaris Scouten. So Yaris Scouten with a good start from Third on the grid, up into second place. The jostling pack, there's your pole man. And up the inside, points leader David Kajaya. The Georgian driver has been a mighty force in the Legends this season. Along with Konstantin Koliashvili, his compatriot, and all the races. He's buzzing 1200cc motorcycle engines, three-fifth scale races. Real handful in any conditions. And Ferry Monster starting to pull away fast now. Yoda Scouten in second place with the green highlights on his car. And Ferry Monster also racing in the Supercar Challenge this weekend. Lots of track time up the inside. A looping spin from Art Jan Ringelberg. Oh, and he's not the only one. There's the pole man facing the wrong way as well. Frederick Korneck. Looks like they'll both rejoin. Ringelberg chastened at the back of the field behind Korneck. Battle for third place. On the inside, Claude Waynet 
and just holding it all together on the outside, David Kajaya. Well, he held fourth place, but I think he's just about to lose it as Ferry Monster pulls away out front. Yoris Kalten in second place. And the real battle is on for third now. Claude Wenet in third place there is Konstantin Koliashvili. Oh, and another looping spin from Frederick Cornet. I wonder if he's got a bit of long-term problems. But these cars can be quite a handful to handle, very different from anything else you'll race. Oh, and Ferry Monster, I think, is in trouble. He is. The leader loops it around. And he will drop down the order. Through goes Joris Skouten. And Ferry Monster drops to the back of the pack. Goodness me. Well, it's very different from the front wheel drive Seat that he normally races. Oh, Mike Barton right up behind us. And this is all part of the reason why drivers love these machines. They're lively, they're exciting to race, and you can really run wheel to wheel. So the race leader is Joris Skouten. Mike Barton right behind. And then 47, that's David Kajaya. Remarkable recovery from Ferry Monster leading the field now as we get towards the closing stages of this race. And one of the great things about these cars is that they punch such a big hole in the air, you're never too far behind to catch up. He's got David Kajaya right behind him. Kajaya looking to the inside as they come into Osterbrücken for the final time. So this could go either way. Ferry Monster, after looping it around and losing the lead early in the race, fantastic tigering drive to come back within the last couple of minutes of the chequered flag and have the race lead. It still could go any way of three ways for victory. Jaya pushing hard. Right behind is Mike Barton with the dark colours on the car. He looks to the inside of the Georgian driver and squeezes through for second. And they're not alone. Joris Kalten still perhaps in the hunt. Fast run now, back towards the final chicane. This is absolutely flat out stuff in these Legends cars. Bravery required, wheel to wheel. And the Georgian trying to get back into second place. He does it. Great move from David Kajaya. Goes back by Mike Barton. And Barton having a last lap launch into the gear. Jimmy Chicane, absolutely classic ass and stuff. It is going to be victory for Ferry Monster. Barton in second in a drag race for the line. Kajaya lost Skelton. It is Kajaya by a fraction in third. And Skelton in fourth. Wow. Drama all the way to the line, and that is why the Legends Super Cup is so entertaining. Ferry Monster with a big smile, and I'm sure he's not alone. As the FA1 season comes to an end, it's our first ever wet race, starting behind the safety car, led by Danny Kloss, Nigel Melker, and Sergio Campana. The field release then, down to the gate, Tim a chicane. Danny Kloss, the race leader. Nigel Melker, our race one winner, right behind him. And in these slippery conditions, battle on for third. Sergio Campana just ahead of Jeroen Moll. Can Moll see down the inside into turn one to make a move? He can't, he lunges in deep. On board with Nathaniel Berton, being very cautious. Craig Dolby's out on the Astro turf in front of us, loses traction and a place. And they are squirming around. Dolby in the blue and yellow Sweden car trying to come back. Marco Barber drifts out very wide at the hairpin. Shockingly bad conditions. Even these full wet weather Michelin tires struggling for grip. So Danny Kloss, the man with the real whip hand here, he can see where he's going and that's a huge advantage. Nigel Melker can a little bit. Third, Sergio Campana skating around. Then Jeroen Mull. Then fifth place, Richard Gonda. And Nathaniel Berton, a safe pair of hands in any weather, showing just how tricky these conditions are. Understeer, understeer, gripping finally. Oh, that's horrible stuff at Debult. Well, Nigel Melker wasting no time, pulling out of the spray, trying to have a long run down the fast back section of the track. And there 
Here's Nathaniel Berton under pressure from Craig Dolby as well. And Melka has made it around the outside. Ramsuk in the rain. Well, that is ballsy stuff. He has the lead over Danny Kloss. Wow, fantastic stuff from Nigel Melka. Reminding them to put their rear rain lights on if they haven't already. Richard Gonda on his own. And this weather really spreads the field out because visibility is at such a premium. If you can't see the track, you can't drive around it. Campana in third, Mull in fourth, Italy and Portugal. And somebody's meandered off wide there. I think that was Gabbiani. And there's our fifth place car, Richard Gonda for Slovakia, finding grip to be at a premium as well. Nigel Melka throwing the car around here. Clearly feels that there is grip to be found. But is that the short way of finding a gravel trap? Again, look at the massive understeer there. The wheels turning and nothing happening at the front end. And Craig Dolby picks up a place. That's Richard Gonda, I think, has gone off. Well, now, was that Gonda off before? Because that certainly was him there. So he's lost fifth place. And that will be to Nathaniel Berton. There is our second place man. We're on board with Marco Barber. And the Team Spain car in the gloom. Nigel Melka starting to pull away now. And the Ginzani team on the pit wall. Isn't anybody enjoying these conditions very much, maybe with the exception of Nigel Melka. Oh, wheel spin as soon as Campana tries to get on the power. It might be that his car is still too firm for these wet conditions in the hope that it'll dry up. Marco Barber chasing Sebastian Balthazar in the Team Germany car. Oh, 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 huge moment for Balthazar. Looks like Nigel Melker is finding plenty of grip in the race lead. Balthazar still squirming. Barber goes by him. Battle for third. Jeroen Mull in front of Sergio Campana. Oh, and someone's on the ground. That's Mull. Over the barriers he goes. I think he might be out of the race there. Dramatic stuff from Jeroen Mull. And he's not the only one struggling for grip. A little less drama, though, for Jamaria Gabbiani. Balthazar comes back out after his pit stop for Team Germany. And there's Jeroen Mull. Well, glad to see that he's OK, talking about his scary ride. Richard Gonda all over the runoff areas, down to the gate, Tim Chicane. And we saw Marco Barber trying to put in a move on Nathaniel Berton. On board now with the Spaniard. Oh, slippery, slippery. You have to be really on your toes here. Fresh, wet weather tyres will help. Wouldn't be at all surprised to see some drivers going for four tyres rather than two in these conditions with Berton. Still in front of Marco Barber and the Slovakia car of Richard Gonda. Good three-way battle here. Berton drifts out wide at the hairpin, squares it off and gets a great exit onto the straight. Cuts off Barber's nose and that'll leave him vulnerable to attack. Nigel Melka, no such worries. Still struggling on the exit under power. 550 horsepower cars really spinning up their wheels at every opportunity. Danny Kloss still in second place in the Team Great Britain entry. Nigel Melka will have to judge his pit stop well in these conditions and hope the team do as good a job for him today as they did yesterday. Time lost now could be really crucial. In the pit lane comes the Team Mexico entry. Behind him, Marco Barber. And the Mexican car looks to be stopping. Barber in for his stop. And that frees up Richard Gonda now to attack Nathaniel Berton. And Gonda does exactly that. Dives to the inside of Berton. Team China car comes right back on the exit. Craig Dolby in the pits for Team Sweden. Hoping to get a full run here. Just a two-tire change. Fronts only. Being able to point the front with the steering wheel is really important in this weather. Richard Gonda comes into the pit lane as well. So Nathaniel Berton stays out. And Gonda trying to get the undercut there. Oh, Balthazar skating around. Right behind him, Baskauten. 
Well, local knowledge helped the Dutch drivers. On pit road now is our race leader. Again, stops before the second place man, Danny Kloss. And again, Kloss will have to try and do a great in-lap to get advantage of some kind on Nigel Melker. Berton on pit road. Well, how is all this going to sort itself out? In these weather conditions, anything could happen. There's Kevin Claveros, the second in the Mexican cars. And there, Craig Dolby, fresh out of the pits. Lots of front-end bike now, going to try and use that. Off goes Nathaniel Berton. Grip just as hard to find on the pit apron as everywhere else. Team China car back out on track. And he comes back on in front of this battling group. So Nigel Melker came in from the lead. We'll have to wait and see what happens with Danny Kloss after the Spaniards pit stop in the Team GB entry. And again, he comes in a lap later. And there is Richard Gonda right in front of a queue of cars now. And Melker, is he going to retake the lead? Kloss's team, he hasn't even got to them yet, so Melka will have the lead. And Danny Kloss's MoMA team had a bit of a disaster in the pit stop yesterday, lost him a lot of time. Melka leads from Kloss and Campana, and Melka throwing the car around like he's an ice skater, sideways everywhere. Big smiles on the pit wall at Azerti. The Dutch car out front. Daniel Berton, Richard Gonda skating around. All these guys battling to try and get onto the podium with Sergio Campana. Could be a real grandstand finish in these wet weather conditions. Well, this is such a test of driver consistency and repeatability. Melka comes onto the straight and he's got Compatio Baskouten in front of him. And getting through battles like this might cause the leader a problem or two. Danny Kloss unable to close at the moment. It looks as though not only has he got the driving right, but the setup is perfect for Nigel Melka too. Richard Gonda lunges wide around the outside. Right behind him, Kevin Claveros. Gonda still not able to make ground. Here is the leader through traffic who safely negotiates Jamaria Gabbiani. And Richard Gonda attacking now, looking to try and pick up another place. Driver from Slovakia out with any chance of winning the championship this weekend. But he's really made a great name for himself in this series. Young man that very few had heard of before the championship began, and he's really proved what a young racing talent he is. And again, he attacks hard. He's looking for another pass, and again, he's going to send it up the inside. Deep under braking, being very brave indeed, and I think he'll get through as a result. So Gonda by Nathaniel Berton as the leader heads on to the last lap. Malcolm might not need to pass him, such as his advantage. But it's hard to break the flow. And there is the leader. He doesn't want to drop too much pace because then the focus goes, the grip from the tyres go, and you don't want to bin it on the last lap. He'll go the long way round the outside. Danny Kloss in second, Sergio Campana in third. And there is Richard Gonda. Looks like he's heading to sixth place. Danny Kloss in second position here. It's been a while since I've watched Danny Kloss at the wheel of a single seater, and it's been a little bit too long. Nigel Melka, victory in race one, victory now in an unbelievably slippery race two. A dominating win, absolutely crushed the opposition. Fantastic race weekend to round out a fantastic season. He is our champion. Let's hear from him and our other title holders. Yeah, you drive in Holland and you can win the championship, you know, so it's great. 
there are a lot of friends, family, and then, and then you win two times on dry and on the wet, so for me it's amazing. The race was very fun, uh, but uh, after uh, three or four laps, my water temperature was very high, and uh, I cannot uh, push very hard. And uh, I go some uh, last uh, three laps uh, slowly, and that's why I lose two position, and uh, I took third place. But uh, I'm happy because uh, I'm a season champion with points. Yeah, it's it's great, of course. You know, uh, I had a good season. Uh, after Nurburgring, I start winning. And I found my setup, and uh, yeah, still winning today, so I'm happy with that. So that's a good feeling. Congratulations to all our champions. That's the end of Acceleration 2014, a unique mix of music and motorsport. See you next year.